geothermal with water flow issues and a pump replacement i'm going to show you how to replace a pump on a flow center for a geothermal system you're watching taddy digest i'm tad let's get started we're in the crawl space where the geothermal system is located it's a closed loop system and it's got a loop in the ground somewhere out there this right here are the status lights and when i first came to this job last week I seen that we had a blinking red light and it was next to water flow. So I knew there was a water flow issue. Immediately, I hooked up my loop gooser tool to be able to read pressure and figure out what my water pressure was because I've got my inlet and my outlet line going to my coaxial inside the geo system. And what I found was there was zero PSI. There was literally no water. And we can have a leak in the loop or it could be that whenever this was installed you know you need to take and use a flush cart for a certain amount of time and then you may may need to actually go back a year later even two or three years later from contraction and expansion of those uh, loops and those lines that carry water you may need to actually do the flush cart again to get more air out and to be able to fill that loop up with water so i had no water what i did was i took a water hose i hooked it to my loop gooser tool and i hooked it to the pt port and as the pump ran, I filled it up with water, and that's when I figured out we have a pump issue. This right here is my flow center. Take a look. That is the pump. So we're going to be replacing that, and I'm going to show you why. This right here is the control section in the geo system. You can see there's the contactor. Over here, we got our wiring going to our pump. How do we know that? Well, you see the black and the white wire. We've got this 12-2 Romex wire coming from those terminals and they're going to the actual pump. So whenever the contactor closes, energizes the compressor, you can see that there are two wires that come from the compressor, right? And they're right here. There's a purple wire on top and there's a black wire. Those go through a set of fuses or little poppers, resettable fuses and then they go into those terminals. So they provide 240 volt to that pump whenever the compressor kicks on. And you wanna make sure that it has power and if it has power and it's not working, that's an indication that your pump is bad. Now I'm gonna show you the pressure, the water pressure on the lines. We're gonna take the cap off the PT port, pressure temperature port. Make sure that on the loop gooser tool that the shutoff valve is in the off position and then we're just gonna place it in like this. You can see what is the pressure it is. Oh, it is zero. That is not good. That means we probably have a very large leak. So I'm going to replace the pump. I'm going to put water in it, but I may need to actually put a pressure reducing valve and actually run a water line into the flow center. And I've done that before. If you don't know how to do that, I would run it right there in one of those ports on one of the sides of the flow center. If you don't know how to do that, I will actually put a video in the link in the description to a video to where I show you how to do that. So, and it's to be able to provide that loop with water and set a certain pressure so it never goes below that. Otherwise, the pressure reducing valve will open up and feed water in there to achieve the pressure that you set it for. And that way, you can actually have your geo system work because if it's 95 degrees and you don't have air, you're not going to be very happy. So, you see the pressure? I'm going to go ahead and place it in the other PT port and take a look what we got wow zero this is not good this is not good at all wow okay let's continue here's our flow center here's our burp screw for our pump this is the screw you take out if you want to get some of the air out of the system if you take this screw out of the way and take a look inside, that's a hole straight through the shaft. You're probably wondering why there's a hole in the shaft of the motor. The reason there's a hole all the way through the shaft of the motor is so that the water is allowed to flow through that shaft and cool the bearings. And you can actually see if the motor's spinning when it turns on, you can actually just put your flathead screwdriver right here against the shaft. You'll be able to see if it's spinning. How are we gonna change this? The first step is we're gonna cut the breaker so we don't have any power going to the pump. The second step is we need to isolate the loop from the geo, right? 
because this right here, this top section is for the loop. The bottom section is what goes to the geo. So we need to take these valves using our uh, ratchet and we're going to take and line that up to where we just cut off the loop. So you see the position of that valve, see the position of this one. We're going to take this one and do the same thing with our ratchet. All right. So now the loop is cut off from the geo system. Now we can take the pump out. If we try to take the pump out without adjusting the valves to isolate the geo from the loop, then we're going to have a bunch of water pouring out of where the pump is located on this flow center. So be careful, cut the breaker off, please. And then you can take and remove this pump. Now, what we're going to do next, since we've isolated this, is we're going to take the wiring loose. All right, so now we're going to take the cover off. The way we do that is we take this screw that holds the cover on off. And got that off. There's our wiring. Pretty simple wiring, right? We got a capacitor, and then we've got two wires. Take those off since we don't have power. We're good. So then we take this wire loose once we get the ground screw loose. See that ground screw? So we're going to take that ground screw loose and then just pull this wire out. Now there are four Allen bolts, one on each side of the pump. You're going to take your Allen tool and you're going to loosen all four of these up. And once you loosen those up, then you can take them out. Yeah, got all of these loose. So yeah, take all four of them out. Remove the four Allen bolts. And take the pump out. Ooey, that is dirty. And it looks like a type of soil, sediment, clay. Wow, that is not good at all. Let's dig around in here. pump went bad. I don't really even feel comfortable putting a pump on this. I just don't know. See there's the hole going from the geo leading in. Well coming from the loop we have this hole here right up in here and then it goes into the impeller of the pump and then it flows through here into the geo. But that's really not good. I don't feel comfortable about this. We have an issue with the loop. We really need to get that fixed first. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the pump by taking the four Allen bolts out and removing the motor and impeller from this housing here. I'll get these bolts out. Make sure you have the gasket in place. We don't need this part. So that gasket's there. And we're going to take, put our pump like this. Boop, and then put our four Allen bolts in. I'll get these bolts tightened. Pump is in place. The bolts are tight. And I was using a five millimeter Titan set of Allen tools up at the link in the description. And the customer said that ever since I came out and I filled it up with water, that she had air, which is unusual to me because when I get here, it says zero, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm pretty sure this is not an open loop, so it's not a well pump and dump. It's a closed loop. It's underneath the ground. The pipes are. So I don't know where the dirt's coming from and why the loop's zero, but it's just unusual. She's got air. How does she have air when the, the pressure's zero? Is my gauge messed up? We'll find out in a minute because I'm going to connect the power. And then after I connect the power, I'm going to go ahead and fill up the loop again while the pump's not running and then turn the pump on. So we'll see what happens. This pump's a little bit different. I like the wiring. You just see those little tabs. You pull them down, push the wire in. We got L, N, and ground. So that's nice. 
This is a three speed pump. We got three different speeds, low, medium, high. When I put the cover on, I'll show you. Covers back on, you see how it says low, medium, high. We'll set it on the low speed. Got the water hose connected to the loop goose tool and it's on. You can see that by turning this on there. Let's go ahead and connect it. Now you can see how it says zero PSI. We're connected to the PT port. Let's turn on the valve. And you can see how it's filling it up. Let's turn the breakers on. Almost forgot. Gotta turn these valves the right direction for the water to flow. Oh, now you can hear that. Water going into the loop. Now the water can flow. You can hear the water going in. Let that run until the pumps come on. All right, see the breakers are off. Turn them back on. The unit is on and it just kicked back off. Okay. Got the burp screw out of the end of the pump so we can see the shaft, that little vent screw. That way we can make sure there's water coming out. Make sure we got the air out. So let's take and check the unit or the pump when the unit's running. Okay, pump is running. Let's check our pressures. Low side is going down, high side is staying about, hmm, looks like 280. Low side 125, that's pretty good. Compressor just made a weird noise. Just kicked off. Wonder what's happening. Why is it kicking off? The pump was running. Standing pressure on the outlet port, PT port, outlet line, is. Looks like it's going down quite a bit. What is that? Customer's dog is in the crawl space with us. Hey, buddy. You're just gonna take a seat right there? Okay. So yeah, it's going down right now. So I need to open this water line up, add water while the pumps are running. I may go ahead and just add some now. And then see what happens. See if it shuts off again. Of course, pressures look good, so we're not kicking out on low pressure or high pressure. Unit's back on, and we're steady at about 46 PSI on the outlet side. And let's see, our pump is running still. I can hear the water flowing. Pressures are still pretty much the same. There's the coaxial. Reversing valve, filter dryer, TXV, indoor fan sections right there, compressor. Let's see what happens. Is it going to stay running? Is it going to kick back off? unit is currently running right now so I think it was definitely the water pressure I'm gonna take the burp screw out got good flow pump is on high speed I'm gonna take and put this back in I can smell that antifreeze now let's take and shut it off water pressure drops too, way too low so we need to keep it going keep the water going inside all right it's been about five minutes shut it off again see if it goes down is it going down looks like it's holding maybe going down a little bit but not much yeah just a little bit all right I'm gonna turn it back on running some more you know really I want above 30 in the winter time you can have upwards of 50 and in summertime you can have 30 because during the winter you know that the pipes will contract during the summer and they'll expand now I need to take and measure the pressure difference across the coaxial right so I've got a different gauge 
We're gonna take and press this in. And we've got 32, right? And then we've got 28 28 that's better I can hear the water flowing now we definitely had did not have enough water pressure that was the reason that we had to replace this pump hopefully we don't have a leak in the lines I'm gonna go ahead and hook back up fill it back up with water, make sure I got enough water pressure, then I'm gonna admonish the customer to have us come back and install a water line and a, and a pressure reducing valve right there. So, oh, kicked off, yeah. So we already, we're already low again. She needs that line. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just, let's install that line. I'll be back next week to install the water line, to install the pressure reducing valve. That way I can get the water pressure level up to an acceptable amount so the geothermal system can work well and the customer can have some cool air. If you want more geothermal videos, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I will put the link for the video where I installed that water line, the pressure reducing valve, so you do know how to do that. But go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. Bunch of videos on there. If you want more experience for geothermal, maybe how to use a flush cart, how to use a heat socket fusion tool to weld the polyethylene or butylene pipes and the fittings together. I've got two videos on my playlist and it's titled HVAC Training Courses. It's a members only playlist for level three members. So level one, I've got a geothermal training guide. If you got my email, I'll send it to you. If you don't, comment below. If you're a level one member, I got that guide for you. Level three, You've got access to all those members only videos and there's some great geothermal training videos. So definitely check those out. Hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you learned something, let me know in the comments what it was if you did learn something. If you have a question, questions can lead to new content. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This was a HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.